الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خالق السماوات والأرض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا صدق الله العظيم All praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and the earth All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of each and every one of us everything All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who gives life and takes life and he has the power to do whatever he wishes We glorify Allah and we thank our Creator for His blessings, His bounties, and His favors upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and He has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is His servant and final messenger. Ibadullah. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. This day have I completed your way of life for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has given us favors. Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And I have completed my favors unto you, and I have chosen for you Islam as your way of life. Islam, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is a, a comprehensive way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this way of life that we ought to practice every single day the lawful and the unlawful. What is lawful? And what is unlawful? He tells us that success lies in the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He tells us that success lies in submission, that this is what will matter on the day of judgment. It is not what we have, what Allah has given to us in terms of our wealth, our children, our resources. But what matters or, or what is important is Allah tells us, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum Verily, the best of you in the sight of Allah is the one who is most righteous, the one who is most God-fearing. That is what will matter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it's all about submission. How well do we submit ourselves to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. Enjoin right, forbid evil. And die not except that you die submissive to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, submission. That is what we need to make sure that is within our lives that we are submitting to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are following what his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he brought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many blessings. Many blessings. Among them, two of the 
greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us are wealth and children. In the world that we live in today, we find that people allow these two blessings, wealth and children, to distract them or to become obstacles when it comes to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I, I want you to, to relate to this. Whether you are parents who are old, you know, you're elderly, or you are parents who are young, whether you are rich or you are poor, in the world that we live in, Allah has blessed us so much with these two blessings, and there are many who use them, maybe not realizing what they're doing to distract them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah warns us about this in the Quran. He says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wala awladukum an dhikrillah wa man yaf'al dhalika faulaika humul khasirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, do not, he's addressing people of faith, not, you know, just people who don't believe. Allah is addressing believers and he's saying, O oh, people of faith, O oh, you who believe, do not make your wealth and your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah continues, Verily, those who allow their wealth and children to become obstacles, to become distractions, remove them from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will surely be from among the losers. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Islam teaches us that when it comes to our wealth and to our children, that we have certain responsibilities. There are certain guidelines. We must regard our wealth and our children as blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wealth, what is its significance? How do we use it? And how do we acquire it? Significance. We look at it as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walillahi mirathu samawati wal earth. And to Allah belongs everything that is in the heavens and the earth. So the wealth that we have, where did it come from? It came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you are a billionaire or a millionaire, you, you know, just have a few dollars, whatever you have, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how do we use it? We see in Islam that the wealth that we have, it, it needs to be purified. And it's not to be acquired only for a personal use, but it is also acquired so that it can be of use for others. And so we are told that Islam is built on five fundamental pillars. Buni al-Islamu ala khams, shahadati ala ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad rasulullah. وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَانِ وَحَجِّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ السَّبِيلَ Islam is built on five fundamental pillars. To testify, one, testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. 
and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah to establish prayers second third to give the charity obligatory charity zakat and so when we look at our wealth we see that Islam promotes sharing and that we need to share in that from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us Islam also teaches that when it comes to our, our wealth even though it is ours that Allah has given it to us that we should avoid extravagance that we do not spend extravagantly but there should be a balance in the when, when we look at our wealth, we must make sure that what we earn, it's more of a responsible earning. It comes from halal source. You know, you, you just can't say that there is wealth out there, I will go and take whatever I want and in the most un, unlawful way. It must be honest work when we look at our wealth. When we look at our wealth, we must always show gratitude and put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given to you. If it is one dollar, if it is five dollars, whatever Allah has given to you in terms of wealth, always be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And if you are thankful, I will certainly increase you, I will grant you more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we, we should always remember that the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are numerous and we will never be able to count them. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا And if you were to try to tease in favors of Allah, you will never be able to count them. Imagine my dear brothers and my dear sisters, in terms of the wealth that we have, we can provide shelter over our heads. We can have three meals per day. We can make sure that we wear clean, nice clothing. We can have comfortable beds. We, you know, and, and we can go on and on. And that's the wealth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us, when we look at this wealth, that it is a, a trust and a manner from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must be content with what Allah gave to us, show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we, if we show that contentment and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes us, uh, it, it prevents us from having that excessive attachment to our wealth. When you are content and when you are putting trust in Allah, then you don't have that attachment, excessive attachment to the wealth. And the wealth will not prevent you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at children, again, they are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have responsibilities, proper upbringing, and making sure that we take care of their well-being. Parents are responsible to ensure the physical, emotional, and spiritual growth of their children. It's not only the physical. It's not only the emotional. And sometimes people neglect completely the spiritual and so we, we look at all aspects of the growth of the child and that's the responsibility of parents we, we need to make sure that this blessing that Allah gave that we nurture faith 
we nurture the teachings of Islam within that child and we make sure that moral values are instilled within that child by you being a parent setting example. You know, children will not just have more moral values by be, just because you know they were born Muslims. They need to see their parents. They need to see people in the environment setting examples for them. So if they see people who are loving and kind and compassionate, they see people who maintain their identity, they are Muslims, they see people who do right, keep away from wrong, that's the example that will you know, have an impact on them, will make a difference in their lives. Responsibility, parents are supposed to make sure that they extend that compassion and kindness to their children. Responsible to share love and care and respect. Parents are responsible to educate, to grant them knowledge to provide quality education for them. If you see that your child is not receiving that type of education, then you need to make a difference, do something. And you know, it, it is not only the acquiring of the knowledge, but you need to see that your child is doing something with the knowledge that he or she is acquiring. You put your child in an institution where the child acquires the best of knowledge, but when you look at your child, you don't know if he's a, a, your child is a, a male or female. You don't know, you know if this is your child or someone else's child because of the way he or she speaks to you. You, you don't know, that, you know what your child is involved in. And then you say, no, my child have a perfect education. He is good in math, and she is good in economics. But look at the knowledge that the child has acquired. Is it quality knowledge? Is it knowledge that benefits? Is it knowledge that makes a difference in the child's life? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is important that parents instill faith they instilled within their children the, the teachings of the Quran, the love for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's important that parents instill within their children values, and they instilled within them the, the practices of the deen. There, there ought to be a, a balance between what Allah has given and how you use it to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, we are talking about the blessings of Allah. Wealth and children, do not allow them to divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we do that? We prioritize spiritual development. Give that, you know, the priority to spiritual development. Don't only look at the physical and the emotional development. Look at how I can elevate my child spiritually, how I can elevate myself spiritually because of what Allah has given to me. Allah has given me wealth and children. How can I use them so that I can be elevated spiritually? We, we need to avoid excessive attachment and, and recognize that these are blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always need to make sure that we are seeking 
the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we, we have to practice self-discipline, discipline ourselves. Because what Allah has given to us, if we are not disciplined, it can be a, you know, a distraction, it can be an obstacle. I, I want to remind you of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us as examples in the Quran. Look at the connection, look at the connection of parents and children. Look man the wise. Look at his connection with his child. Allah blessed him with his child. But he was there giving advice to his child. Ya bunayya innaha in taku mithkala habbatim min khardalin fatakun fi sakratin au fi samawati au fil ard yati bihallah. He says to his son, if it be anything, whether it is hidden in the heavens, on the earth, it, it, wherever it may be, whatever it is, Allah has full knowledge of everything. He says to his son, Ya Bunayya, Akim is Salat, Wa'mur bil ma'roof, Wanha anil munkar, establish prayers, give establish prayers and join right and forbid evil and the advice goes on L look at the connection he did not only say like what happens in the world today i want you to be the best in terms of material things in terms of dunya and there is no spiritual development that child will become a distraction for you, will become an obstacle for you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you will be looking to fulfill all the child's needs with regards to, and then you will forget your akhirah. Look at Ibrahim and Ismail, this beautiful season that we just witness. Look at the relationship. A father saying to his son, I see it in a dream that I offer you in sacrifice. And the son, spiritually elevated, he says, Oh, my loving father, Ya Abadi. If al ma tu'mar, satajuduni insha'Allah min as-sabirin. O my loving father, do as you have been commanded. You will find me from among the patient ones. Sometimes, you, you know, parents today can't even get their child to bow their head down once in a year. How did this happen? It, the connection, the relationship, it has to be based on submission, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The great prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, when death approached him, he said, gathered his children around him and he said, what will you worship after me? And look at the response. We will worship your God and the God of your forefathers, Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq. Ilahan wahidan, one true God, and we will submit our lives to this one true God. That, that's the, the relationship. Allah has blessed us with 
wealth. He has blessed us with children. How do we ensure that the, these blessings do not divert us from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do we ensure that these blessings, they will continue to be a blessing for us even after we have departed this world? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا مَاتَ إِبْنُ Adam." In kata amaluhu illa min thalath Sadaqatin jariyah Aw ilmin yuntafa'u bihi Aw waladin salihin yad'u lahu The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said when a man dies When any one of us leave this world All our deeds are cut off except for three Sadaqa jariyah The same wealth that Allah has given to us Use it so that it becomes that perpetual charity, that charity that will bring us reward even after we have departed from this world. So you don't have to be rich, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Allah has blessed you with a little. Make sure that you do the right thing by it. It doesn't divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we put so much emphasis on wealth that we get and we want more and more and more and more and more is nothing is wrong with it but if it prevents us if it becomes an obstacle it becomes a distraction from connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it becomes it, it is a problem it's definitely a problem when it does that whatever Allah has given to us make sure that it becomes that which will make us connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will be a source of blessings for us even after we have departed from this world. Allah has given children and he says, Waladin salihin, this is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, Waladin salihin yad'u lahum, a pious child, a good child, a, a child who is a, a, a taqi, one who is committed, one who you know, is obedient, submissive. You, you want a child like that so that the child will continue to pray for you. And so all the little ones here today, the young ones, when your fathers and mothers say to you, that we want you to become good Muslims. We want you to pray. We want you to fast. We want you to practice the principles of Islam. It, it, is, it is for your benefit. And it is also will be a benefit for your parents. Because you will be a source of blessings for them. Even after they have departed from this world. So don't look at it as if they are imposing on you something that is not right. They, they are trying to make sure that you that Allah has given to them is not a distraction from their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A pious child, a good child, who will be a source of blessings by praying for their parents on the day. You know, every day they will lift their hands or even in their prayers, they would say, Rabbi Jalni Muqeem as Salah. Oh my Lord, make me from those who establish prayers and from my offspring. And, oh Allah, forgive my parents. Constantly, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, again, do not allow what Allah has blessed you with to become an obstacle a distraction from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you have responsibilities when it comes to your wealth and to your children. But remember that these responsibilities, it's not dunya only, it's not only with regards to this dunya, but it's regards to the akhirah, that you want to make sure that you win both dunya and you win akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us 
to recognize the bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have these bounties and favors bring us closer to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, have mercy upon us, give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of the hellfire. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمن المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters الله سبحانه وتعالى he says in the Quran وما أموالكم ولا أولادكم بالتي تقربكم عندنا زلفا إلا من آمن وعمل الصالحة. الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran, it is not your wealth nor your children that will bring you nearer to us in position, but it is those who believe and they work righteous deeds. That's what will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in position. You want status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we need to make sure that we have firm faith. And that faith needs to be demonstrated with our deeds, our amal. لَيْسَ iman بِالْتَمَنِّي وَلَكِنْ مَا وَقَرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَصَدَّقَهُ الْعَمَلِ Iman is not a mere wish or hope, but Iman is that which is registered in the heart and it is being approved by the limbs of the body. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the wealth and the children, they are but a trial. They are beautification of this world. We need to make sure that we strongly believe in Allah and that we are constantly doing righteous deeds with what Allah has blessed us with. Allah has blessed us with health, blessed us with time. He has blessed us with children. He has blessed us with wealth. He has blessed us with knowledge. Whatever Allah has given to us, make sure that it is being used to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to grant us from his bounties. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to guide us so that we use these bounties to get closer to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to have mercy upon us and to give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter and to save us from the torment of the hellfire. لَقَدْ أَمَرُنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربع أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين وبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان ليوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غل للذين آمنوا وربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة.